The process is almost 100% started with automatic drawing, meaning it's less likely that it's contaminated by my will. Things that actually maybe don't totally make sense or are impossible to sculpt. Um, all these things that I've found over the years are important to get to new layers of language because there's so much practicality involved in sculpting something. You're working with dangerous tools and there's a limit to the material, but in drawing, so many things can happen fairly quickly. For that reason, I've really been faithful to drawing first and sculpting later. And also, in fact, the part of the vocabulary of the sculpture is my loyalty to the drawing and all of its faults, its perspectival faults, its textural faults, or its attributes of texture. And so sometimes I may be using the side of a piece of charcoal, but then I try to figure out, well, how am I going to replicate this texture in wood? This kind of erasing mark does like become something like transparent. In this show, for example, there's a couple of pieces of plastic that were actually marks that were erased from charcoal, or there's one object that's lacquered and and the lacquer was because of the way that I had drawn this certain object that I decided it must be glossy. There are lots of different kinds of objects that lead you to contemplation in a lot of different ways. One of the most exciting ways to contemplate something is to be completely unsure on which way you're gonna feel about it. This is one of the things that brought me to abstraction. Somehow there's more slippage with the abstraction. You can't fully rely on each part that you're seeing. You can't decode it. There's a quality in these things that feels as if they're creatures, aliens. And sometimes there are aliens among our own species, you know, someone who in the most beautiful way looks different. Or if you're, let's say, like a mile or two underneath the water, you're seeing some very fantastical organisms that you could never believe existed or, or even understand why they look the way they look. But because it's natural, you accept it and you're almost in wonder of, of how things became the way they did. A mushroom that glows or, you know, or a lizard that changes colors or a strange sponge that's just a whole bunch of like vertical strings, you know, all these weird things. These are the things that really inspire me, and I think that many of the works feel that they are alive and that they have consciousness, and that somehow the nature of their being then creates psychology.